Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com, and today we're going to talk about the winning warm-up and some things to consider. Now, we're going to go into stuff that you probably never thought of, but as I started doing winning warm-ups for the last 10 years, we really started noticing a huge difference, not only in our maximum effort lifts, but also our dynamic effort lifts and our injury rates and the ability for us to increase work capacity go up tremendously. So let's get at it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of history on winning warm-ups before we actually dive into some variables that you may not have thought of. 2012, I do my first raw bench press competition and I hit 600. Pretty easy. And that was what started the process of me wanting to go to do completely raw meat. So before 2012, I had broke multiple world records in equipped lifting and that's really where the world class lifters were. By about 2010-11, this transition started to switch back into completely raw lifting. Now at the time, the all-time world record was 2,204 pounds set by a great man named Dan Kovacs. Now as I hit this 600 bench, I started to realize that my potential to possibly break this all-time world record total was totally there. But I had to figure out how to get there. So in 2013, I do my first completely raw meet. Now, at this time, it was actually pretty funny. I, I show up at the meet and don't realize it's a walkout meet, and I've been training with a monolift for like 10 years. So I ended up still squatting the third highest squat ever done in human history at 308 weight class with bare knees and just a belt. Now, when I get done squatting, I am expecting, and I squatted a little bit eight, under 800 pounds. The world record in the squat was uh, set by a guy named Scott Weech at 826. So I did, I think, 788 that particular meet. And I'm waiting for my 600 bench to be there because I had done it before. And what I had noticed was is that when I got to that 600 pound bench press, it was somewhere around 606, is it actually crushed me after squatting 780 raw. And I had to go back to the drawing board and figure out how I was gonna reattack my training. And the first thought process that I had with, like I would with anybody else, or like with most people, is that I start thinking, well, shit, I just need to get stronger. Well, that's a very uneducated answer because at the end of the day, what's stronger? I mean, if that was the third highest total of all time, maybe strength wasn't the issue. Maybe it's something else. So as I'm taking this two-hour drive home, I start realizing that maybe my squat is, is detrimenting my bench press basically on the fact that I was still 305 pounds and I just wasn't conditioned enough. So one big, strong maximum effort attempt smashed my entire energy system and made me super tired. So I go back to the drawing board with, okay, maybe I need to be in better shape. Maybe I don't need to be stronger. And this is where GPP or fitness level really started to play a huge impact in my training. So what I start doing is I start digging around back into notes and I remember this PhD student over in Sydney, Australia, working with pro rugby, started talking about pre-fatigue and its benefits not only in rugby but in the strength training uh, situations that they were seeing over in pro rugby. So as I come back home I'm thinking well shit I ought to probably do higher rep ranges right before I do my main lifts and then I'll be more conditioned and then I'll be able to um, perform the lifts at the maximum potential. So fast forward I design I designed this four sets of 25 I decide to pick one motor pattern exercise, which warms up the specific motor pattern. Because you gotta remember in warm up, there's two different things. You have general and specifics. General warm up would mean I'm just gonna go out and do, let's say, like old school, like a light jog. But specific warm up would mean I'm getting the motor patterns ready for a specific task at hand. So let's use the bench press, for example. Well, if I use dumbbells on a flat bench because I'm gonna bench flat on a flat bench that day, that's gonna specifically warm up if the percentages and the technique is correct, it's going to warm up the exact same motor pattern that I'm getting ready to lift, which is going to not only prime the motor pattern, but also give my body a chance to do something perfect a hundred times before I do something high skill and high weight. That sounds like a pretty interesting thing to do. Now, the interesting part about it is, is that you have to be in shape enough to do it, and for most people, they start off too heavy. So as I started to realize that warm-ups needed to be very specific to the task at hand, I started adding in these four sets of 25 dumbbells, four sets of 25 lat pull downs, because lats is always going to be a limiting factor for many people to stabilize the scapula and allow you to press, right? It's kind of hard to 
say, squat on, you know, something that's bouncy or movable, any little bit that you can take out of that, i.e. get your back insanely strong on the bench, you're going to have less left to right and front to back movement. You're going to be able to push in a better line and make more power. So even if you don't believe that a strong back equals a strong bench, which if you don't, I feel very bad for you. But at the end of the day, what I'm telling you is that it will protect you from shoulder injuries and it will make you bench press much longer, which is a huge proponent. The next thing is that we put in triceps. Now, arm strength is usually a limiting factor for, I would say, 80 to 90 percent of people that don't have a bench where they want it. So now we've tagged in a specific warm-up and two key weaknesses. Now the trick is, is what we started to learn was that winning warm-ups actually raised body temperature. And that's pretty understandable because you're moving. But what body temperature, when it increases, it actually increases electrical conductivity of the central nervous system. One of the biggest guys I ever heard talk about this was a guy named Charlie Francis. And Charlie Francis trained Ben Johnson and Ben Johnson had a 600 plus pound squat for a couple of reps as a 195 pound sprinter. Now this guy had the world record in the 80s um, and hadn't really been beaten. I don't think his time was beaten until Usain Bolt. But the point is, is that he was utilizing a lot of temperature stuff and getting um, Ben Johnson's legs warmer by utilizing either heat packs or electro stem, a lot of these other things. But the point is, is when we raise temperature, we actually increase electrical conductivity. The next thing that we're doing with the warm-up is we're actually increasing work capacity and we're enhancing motor patterns. So if we talked about doing triceps and lats and we're doing a hundred reps of each of those muscle groups before we even bench, what do you think that starts doing to the motor pattern? Well, for the last 10 years I can tell you what it does. It actually starts to correct your form. So when your lats and your triceps get super strong, your bar path becomes a straighter line your body be, is able to push harder because your weaknesses are being fixed. Point is, is that you're only as strong as the weakest link in your chain. So if your warm-ups are designed around trying to fix that weakest link in your chain, then what you're going to start to realize is that that weak link is no longer there and the entire chain of itself functions much better with a lower risk of injury. So I hope this brought out some ideas or some thought processes of why we use the winning warm-up. It's not just to destroy people and make them tired. It has a lot of scientific understanding behind it, which was done by trial and error over the last 10 years. So if you don't know or understand anything about winning worms, I highly recommend that you go get the manuals where we lay it out 100%. And if you're still unsure how to use it, come on to online coaching where we will pre-design all of your warmups and make them exactly for you and your equipment. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at winningstrength.com.